हेलो एवरीवन टुडे वी आर हेयर विद न्यू प्रैक्टिकल व्हिच इज इर्थ्रोसाइट सेडिमेंटेशन रेट एंड आल्सो कॉल्ड एज ईएसआर ओके सो इन दिस वीडियो विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट व्हाट इज द मैकेनिज्म बिहाइंड ईएसआर व्हाट व्हाट इज प्रोसीजर पार्ट एंड द अप्लाइड पार्ट और वी कैन से व्हाट इफ ईएसआर वैरीड इन नॉर्मल वैल्यू सो लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड ओके सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी शुड नो व्हाट ईएसआर इज so erythrocyte sedimentation rate what's that erythrocyte sedimentation rate it's the rate at which the rbc settle down when the blood which is anticoagulated blood or blood mixed with anticoagulant is allowed to stand in a narrow tube for 1 hour okay this is expressed in mm per first hour fine the red cells why they settle down because the red cell and the plasma they have different specific gravity the red cell specific gravity is 1095 being heavier than the plasma or where specific gravity is 1032 so that's why the red cell settle down toward the bottom of tube and the plasma upward okay as compared to the red cells so this is the mechanism behind esr why they settle down or why we are measuring it in 1 hour let's see that sedimentation of a red cells which is nothing but the settling down of rbcs in a sample of anticoagulated blood that occur in three stages first second and third stage in first stage rbc pile up on each other like a stack of coin and form rolux formation that become heavier during 10 to 15 minutes so first 10 to 15 minute only they pile up on each other form rolux in second stage the rollo formation which is nothing but plural of rolux being heavier they sink down toward bottom it takes around 40 to 45 minutes so first they pile up then they sink toward bottom in 10 and then 40 to 45 minutes in third stage which is the last stage there is packing of those mass bunches of red cells of at bottom of blood column okay and this last for around 10 minutes so if it see the minimum duration 10 40 and 10 60 minutes around 60 minutes it take to settle downward that's why we measure esr in first r or one r now let's see the methods used to measure esr there are two methods which can be used to measure esr wind drops method and westigren method and always whenever the esr is being done it's always written which method has been used because the values differ in both the methods let's first see the apparatus part so apparatus required for first wind drop method is wind drop tube okay this is a wind drop tube in which you can see on both side there is marking and the marking vary the direction of marking varies on both the sides here you can see 0 to 10 downward and here you can see 0 to 10 upward okay now why we are having this type of marking because the downward marking is for esr and upward marking is for uh, the pcv okay that's why wind drop tube is also used to pcv measurement okay apart from that the apparatus part are wind drop tube stand this is nothing but a simple tube stand which you know which takes the tube erect which hold it in erect position which is necessary for both the procedures pcv and esr and here this is long nozzle pipet which is also called pasture pipet we can use needle in space in place of this pipet also and if we talk about westigren method the the apparatus are the westigren pipet here you can see the westigren pipet and this is the wind drop pipet just to compare them i have shown both simultaneously so this is wind drop pipet in which both the side there is marking and direction of marking differ both the side right on the other hand westigren pipet which is not blind at downward end first of all you can see this is blind this is like a tube only but westigren pipet is open at downward end also both the end it's open okay and the marking differs it's 0 to 200 downward and this is only for esr measurement first thing second thing is the width of both the pipet is same but the length you can see this is this this 0 to 10 is in centimeter okay so this is 10 mm and here you can see this is this is 30 mm pipet long so this is longer than the wind drops one okay so th this way we can identify both the pipet because in examinations this is not to perform for ug but 
you have to identify these pipette which one is Westergen pipette which one is Windrox pipette and here you can see this is Westergen stand okay here this is a rubber cushion and here it's a screw cap it's not simple tube stand instead the, this is to fix this both open-ended tube here we'll see how it will be done okay apart from that a container or test tube to hold blood whatever blood we have taken venous blood we have taken we can take it into the test tube or we can take it in container then we need a syringe okay and pricking apparatus so this is all about the apparatus now let's see the procedure one by one so first let's see the procedure of wind drops method first of all in both the method you have to what you have to do is you have to take blood and mix it with whatever anticoagulant reasonable for that method so that you have to know now first of all wind drops method wind drops method first thing is either you can take 2 ml blood in a edta vial as shown in, in the image or you can take a powder of potassium oxalate and ammonium oxalate and add to 5 ml of blood okay so once this is done you have now blood and anticoagulant you have to mix the content gently but well by inverting the vial few times don't shake it vigorously it can cause frothing this is very important okay so till now you have just taken a blood and mixed it with anticoagulant that's it now what you have to do is you have to fill the wind drops tube how wind drops tube using pasture paper fill the wind drops tube from below upward ensure that there are no air bubbles so the main thing is there should not be any air bubble that's why you have to fill it from downward to upward okay so there will not be air bubble and you have to fill it till 0 and okay 0 to 10 downward is used for ESR so till 0 and you have to fill it okay it so if we have we don't have any pasture paper then slowly with needle we have to pour the blood from downward to till upward there should not be any air bubble once this is done, transfer the tube to its stand and adjust the screw so that it will be vertical. Whatever. If screw is needed or if it's a good stand, then it can hold it independently. No need of screw is there. So you have to just transfer the tube and it should be vertical. That is very important. Okay. Now leave the tube undisturbed in this position for one hour. At end of one hour, read the, read the plasma. Now let's see how. Here. You can see here. The, after one hour, the tube look like this that. On above surface there is a plasma and downward there is packed cells okay now you have to express this result as this is 0 and downward there is a value so if it's 10 then it's 10 10 mm first R you have to show like this okay you have to express your result for example it's 10 then 10 mm first R and according to Windrops method normal values for males it's 0 to 9 mm first R for females it's 0 to 15 mm first R so this is according to wind drops only. Now let's see other method which is Vastigrin method. Now with Vastigrin what we have to do is we have used powder or EDTA in wind drops method. On the other hand Vastigrin we can use a liquid formulation also liquid anticoagulant also which is citrate. So 3.8% sodium citrate can be used in place of that because we have here we have a long tube and we can afford a liquid anticoagulant also okay so mix the content by inverting the vial okay and then what you have to do is you have to fill the vastigan pipette again and how it can be done first of all uh, place tip of your finger over top of the pipette and you you can dip the pipette downward at bottom of whatever vial or whatever test tube you have okay then by capillary action it will be oh, filled it will be filled automatically as you dip the this is a test tube okay and this is vastigrin pipet this vastigrin pipet is dipped into the test tube downward so here and you have tip of finger over the pipet okay as you remove the finger by capillary action from downward the blood will be filled into the pipet like this and you have to fill it till zero mark again okay so fill the vastigrin pipet by sucking it can be done by sucking also or placing the tip of your finger so that you can control the flow or a rubber bulb can be used for the same okay now bring the blood to exact zero mark so this is also the same we have mixed with anticoagulant and we have filled the pipette that's it next is 
what you have to do is as we have filled till zero mark we have to fix it in the stand okay keeping your finger over it only first of all what you have to do is firmly press its lower end here this is a rubber end you have to press it so that lower end can be fixed here okay and then slip the hand slip the uh, tip of your finger from here and slip the upper end into the stand so slip the upper end of pipette under screw cap this is here you can see you can slip it and you can fix it under this screw cap so this way we can fix it okay you can confirm that there is no leakage of blood and it's it should be remaining vertical now after there is no leakage you have confirmed then leave this pipette undisturbed for one hour at end of which you can read the reading of plasma as you can see here the plasma separated after one hour and you can read from zero to whatever value it is and again the values will be shown as for example it's 10 then 10 mm first start according to best chicken method this way also for males 0 to 10 mm for females 0 to 20 first hour values are a bit higher in Westigan method because we have used liquid anticoagulant here okay now let's see applied where the ESR can vary increase in ESR can be found in physiological conditions like age it's low in infants it's high in females because because of the low PCV that's why plasma is higher side okay high altitude pregnancy and temperature so we can have high ESR pathological condition every acute and chronic infection we find increase in ESR bone inflammation disease connective tissue disease malignant disease non-infective uh, inflammations like autoimmune disease nephrosis increase in fibrinogen will raise the ESR because fibrinogen increase the Rolox formation and trauma and surgery it can also raise the ESR let's see when ESR can be reduced if the blood is very viscous so it will settle down very fast decreased fibrinogen level which were increasing the Corolux formation polycythemia increase in RBC they will settle down faster sickle cell anemia spherocytosis or microcytosis so abnormal shapes they will descend faster higher viscosity so ESR decreases normally ESR is indicative of tissue injury and inflammation but reduced ESR or the pattern of ESR change is a prognostic value if a weekly ESR show trend toward decrease then the patient is improving the last slide which is anticoagulants so we should know bit idea about these anticoagulants citrate solution which is liquid using for coagulation studies oxalate is being used in wind drops because we didn't need uh, any liquid formulation we have very less uh, amount of uh, very less uh, lengthy test tube so small test tube that's why we need powder so that it, it will not change the concentration because of anticoagulant okay and second thing is it will not change the shape of uh, red cells so there are ammonium oxalate which swell the RBC potassium oxalate which shrink the RBC so osmolarity is maintained shape is maintained here okay but it will not be used for blood smears for blood smears EDTA is used which is basically very important for morphology of the WBCs it will not disturb the morphology of WBCs that's why for blood smear and most of the hemat investigations EDTA is used so that's all for ESR we have seen what is ESR why the ESR is measured in first hour why uh, what are different procedure of ESR and the applied part of ESR and the significance of anticoagulants used so thanks for watching if you have any query then comment below